I want to underline this point. I love the thematic of this TED talk, which is Aufbruch, because it puts together the elements of departure, the elements of awakening that is really at the earth of the inspiration of the emotion of uh, space, of traveling into space. So I have a background as cosmologist, and this is why I, I, I love to share uh, uh, this emotion. So we will talk essentially about what's happened when we, something happened for the first time, we see something for the first time, the mind stretches and new perspectives comes in, and we are no longer the same people after. So let me start from this suggestion. <laughs> That is go. So we are attached to the dark side of the moon is something that has inspired artists, has inspired uh, writers. And why this? Because we have a sense of, uh, uh, yes. Because you know, for a, for a particular effect from Earth, we can only see one face of the moon. This is called a tidal effect. Is, is due to the fact that the moon uh, um, rotates around its axis, it rotated around us, but always keeping the same face. So this has uh, bring always a lot of inspiration, but since the beginning of this year, this is no longer a dark side of the moon because this Chinese rover, Chang He, has been, uh, uh, the spacecraft has been for the first time uh, soft landing on the surface, on the dark side surface of the moon. So we know now this was uh, uh, to investigate the history of our solar system, to prepare for future exploration, but essentially gave us a perspective that we didn't have before. And this is a very um, nice uh, uh, spacecraft that also let it go a little land, a little rover, U2, that was able to go around and tell us that the dark side of the moon is not so different from the side that we already know. So we have one mystery left, but it uh, has been a big success. And why this has been striking? Because this was the way the 2019 was starting, so this happened beginning in yes, beginning of January, and you well know that this has been the year of the celebration of the 50 years of the landing on the moon. It was the 21st of July 69 when Neil Armstrong made history by becoming the first man to uh, step on our satellite. And he was followed soon after by Buzz Aldrin. And together, they worked for a long time or short time, it's difficult to say this, uh, on the moon, or two hours and a half, in the sea of tranquility. When uh, set the foot on the moon, Lynn Armstrong, the, the, the planet stopped breathing. They were all frozen, all lost. Uh, in front of a black and white TV, uh, about 600 million of people, one-fifth of the humanity of that time, lost in understanding the, um, the greatness and even the reality of this defining moment. It was so huge that very few people remember who went after them, who was the last footprint on the moon. There were 12 people going on the moon in total, and the last one was in 72, and no one returned after that. So this was surely something that put in motion uh, uh, with a way of no return of our presence in the universe, transpassing the boundaries of our world as changed us. But something equally uh, amazing, equally extraordinary happened seven months before. And this was Christmas Eve of 68, if we can lower a little bit the sound. So, uh, 68, the Apollo 8 crew looped for three times around the moon. They were also uh, in uh, uh, greetings, the citizen of Earth, from a famous podcast, the Christmas Eve podcast. They took turns in reading uh, pieces of the Genesis of the Bible when something on the fourth loop, something completely uh, unexpected came to them, the view of our home just picking up from beyond the lunar surface. They were not expecting this, and you see the sun 
the most iconic picture, one of the most iconic pictures we have heard, the earth rise. Actually, with this incontestable beauty where that was undisclosed to human eyes for billions of years, this image caught the human art by surprise. You see our planets floating in this dark, eternal, cosmic night, wrapped in a small uh, blue halo that is not so visible in the picture, but a small blue halo that already Yuri Gagarin saw during his first suborbital trip. And this fragile atmosphere is what stands between us and the suffocating void. So, having they said, it's very beautiful what Bilander said, we came here to see the moon and we discovered Earth. For the first time, we look at ourselves. And the message is clear. You are small. You don't matter. You are a spark in an indifferent universe but you have been able to come so far and look at you from this distance. And I see, I think this is, uh, in a way, the essence of who we are. Of who we are. Uh, there was Leibniz who was saying why there is nothing, there is something instead of nothing. And he also added, nothing would have been much simpler than something. But we are this something, with our ability to ask questions, to strive for answers, and this makes uh, the essence, the beauty, the power of, uh, of our human, uh, human race. Now, again, start, something started. Uh, you know, the word desire comes from Latin. Comes from Latin, desidera esse, be far from the stars. We all, in a way, feel attention to reach out something bigger than us, to reach out something greater than us. And this is why, in a way, we are explorers, we we'll always be explorers, and we are also setting now for the next step to come back to the moon. This is uh, uh, one I, uh, you heard, I work at the European Space Agency. We just had an amazing uh, funding that will also support our exploration plans. We want to go back on, on the moon to, uh, to stay this time, and for that, prepare to the next step, which will be Mars. We will also be able to study the resource in, uh, in situ, and this is uh, what is called the Space Gateway. It's a project with NASA, it will be a space station around, around the moon. So this, is, this will, will happen in, uh, in just a few years' time. And, as I said, building villages on the moon, this time for a longer presence. At the same time, so we are heading on Mars. You know that Musk has already, Elon Musk, the, he's famous for the Tesla, he's famous for his rockets. He wants to bring people on Mars. He wants even to establish bases uh, so that we... Uh, this is the rocket, that the Starship that he formed. He wants to establish place where people could live in, uh, in view of possible uh, catastrophe. But anyway, we see that both the billionaires and the public sector, we are now looking at the red planets with, with big interest. And why we are doing this? We are doing this because uh, on, uh, apart from the fact that it's, it's close, so it's, it's a place that is quite close to Earth, it's a one-year trip, but also because we know that Mars had the same condition that we were on Earth, meaning uh, a solid part, uh, liquid part, and an atmosphere. And we don't know what happened and why today we only have uh, a red, uh, a red rocks. Now, Speaking about the first time, I want to share something where I was personally present. And it was the first time in 97 when the NASA administrator called all the people from the space community to show for the first time images taken from a rover, Mars Pathfinder, that was landing on Mars. It's very difficult to land on Mars, so it's, it's a big achievement. There is not uh, enough atmosphere for a parachute. So, Mars Pathfinder was the first rover able to move on the surface of Mars. So he called us and he showed us this. Uh, uh, so the rover uh, showed us these uh, rocks, more or less what we expected. And then he stopped. He stopped and the camera moved up. 
and we saw for the first time a sunset from Mars. Actually, the real one was pink. This is blue because I like blue, uh, because the atmosphere is not enough. Essentially, it's dust uh, that reflects the light. But it was uh, such a, a moment of wonder to see for the first time a sunset from Mars. There is something that uh, I always uh, um, like to to express is this fact that space gives us superpowers. When we look something distant, we are looking back in the past, because light takes time to travel. When you are uh, drinking a beer and looking at the sunset, your girlfriend, your boyfriend close to you is in the present with you, but that sunset is already past since eight minutes, because this is the time that the light takes to go from sun to you. The same is when you look at, at the beautiful sky in the night. Each point of light is a moment of a different past. So in space, more you look distant in, uh, in space, more are you looking in the past. And this is very also powerful. And there are beautiful pictures from the Hubble Space Telescope where you almost see the first galaxies ever existed because we can look so far away. So, uh, and another thing I like to share is uh, that, okay, we have this blue halo, uh, this atmosphere, and is the reason why we can exist, we can breathe, it's the privilege of life, but also because of this atmosphere, we have the privilege of music. Without air, there is no sound. An explosion, a supernova explosion, is just a beautiful event. There is no violence, there is no noise, because there is nothing to move, there is, and, and there is no sound if you, if you cannot move air. So this is another thing. This universe is really a silent place, and here we can enjoy, we can enjoy Chopin and Mozart. So we are heading far away, and you know this year there will have been uh, uh, Nobels for exoplanets, is, is a very new discovery, only about, uh, yes, from 95, so um, 20 something years, that we know that single stars are an exception. We know now there are 4,000 stars, they have planets around them, which also brings a different questioning about life in space. And one of the, uh, let's say, little solar system that we know well is this one. These are the TRAPPIST. The TRAPPIST uh, is, a, is a solar system that has been discovered by NASA in 2017. And you have seven planets that are like Earth-sized, very close to this cold star. And the same kind in, in a habitable zone, because the star is cold, so you can be closer. And all of these presents characteristics simil, uh, very similar to the characteristic of Earth. It's only four, 40 uh, light years from us, so we will not be able to reach it in our lifetime. But this is something that uh, it's, it's nice to look at it. And uh, ESA will launch next week a beautiful mission to exoplanets. We have three three mission to exoplanets because this is something that the question of finding another Earth somewhere is probably the holy grail we are all looking at. Another first is Europe has been able to landing on a comet at 500 million kilometers from here for the first time. We have been traveling for 10 years, Rosetta, the Rosetta mission, and then we crossed this uh, little comet with this long name, complicated name, uh, a, a comet four kilometers uh, uh, large with a strange shape like a duck. And Rosetta, why, why we were there? Because we wanted to discover how, how it's possible that we have water on our planet. It was just a stone, a very hot stone, how water was able to come to us. So we, uh, we had this mission, and uh, uh, so you see this uh, beautiful, mission, beautiful picture that I like because it's Rosetta leaving the little robot uh, file that is falling in, uh, this, is a, this is a real picture, so like his baby, he is leaving his baby, that will uh, take seven hours to get on the comet. 
Because of low gravity, it will rebound once, then it will go back, it will rebound again, it will go back and finally stay. And our, one of our director general used to say, we have been the first agency to land on a comet, and the second and the third. Uh, and we found water, but it's not a water that is compatible with the water we have on our planet. So the mystery is still there. But this was also a beautiful first. So let me conclude with, uh, uh, with another image. Uh, Earthrise is something that you cannot beat. It was uh, such a beautiful picture, and again, it, it makes such an emotion in... Uh, in all of us. But there has been something that is not so far away in terms of emotion, and uh, uh, is these things. So, uh, in 77, NASA sent two uh, missions to spacecraft, the Voyagers, to go and leave the solar system, travel through the solar system, and then go into the interstellar space. And Carl Sagan, who was an American astronomer and uh, writer, was in charge of uh, deciding what to put on this uh, spacecraft. Because if another in intelligent life would have uh, maybe one day found these messengers, uh, how we could give a hint of what we are. So in this golden record, they, they registered 137 sounds uh, going from the sound of a kiss to the sound of uh, the trumpet of an elephant, uh, pictures. So in a way, they try to put all we, uh, all can give a sense of our, our humanity. And then, uh, so after, uh, in, in 14 of February 1990, so 13 years after, the Voyager was able to go through the solar system. It was ready to leave the solar system for the interstellar space, for its lonely and long uh, traveling through the interspace, uh, to interstellar space. And then NASA was going to shut of the instruments, and uh, Sagan went to see the NASA administrator and and really begged him, please, 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 take a last picture. So the camera turned, and you have uh, from six billion kilometers, so from the edge of our solar system, these little dots there in the sunbeam, you see, this is our home. And in a way, he, he, uh, you have a picture of uh, this sand, this actually, he, he called it the blue pale dot that today we also uh, use, I mean, when we talk about our planet, and gave the sense of being just a grain of dust in a sunbeam, and everything we are, and everything we will be, who we loved, and everything is on li this little dot. And he concluded with this beautiful uh, uh, phrase, and in particular ending, I leave you to read it, but the sense that this little dot is the, is the only place, the only home we have ever known, and should give us a sense of connection, a sense of belonging all together without borders, without reasons to be in conflicts, that is very strong and powerful, and I'm happy to conclude on that. Thank you.